Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. But I told you guys I would be back to reacting to what you guys were suggesting because I was thrown off um, my planning because of the assignments that I had. But now I'm back and so feel free to drop a link in the comment section below and i'll be more than glad to react to it thank you guys for always giving us stuff to react to you guys are the best and thank you for watching i hope you guys are all right and may you stay blessed so today i'm going to be reacting to who wrote the gospels by yusuf estes part two so without wasting time let's get into the video translation of the famous book we refer to as King James Version. He said it, it was, as you probably know, in 1611 AD. The first read translation had to be the very next year because it had some very serious mistakes. Now, one of which was a reference to uh, a good lady as a prostitute. That was a mistake and they had to fix that. That was in 1611 to 1612, the first year. 1613, another translation, etc., etc. He gives a list of the many different retranslations they did in the first and second centuries. In his book, A History of the Translations of the uh, Bible to the English Language, I think that's the full title of it. And uh, then there, if you want to go to some of the Old Testament scholars and see what they've said as well, you can look for um, Dr. Richard Elliot Friedman in his book, Who Wrote the Bible. You can also look to uh, a number of others. Uh, I would re refer also... Uh, go ahead. That's fine. We w want to move on from here. We have we covered the four. They can go and look at these resources you mentioned. Now that brings us down to 23. Who wrote the rest? If you can name a few of the books that come after this, and who are the supposed authors of these books? Well, uh, what we're talking about the references. I, I should also mention there's a website called BibleIslam.com, which is a, a reference site where you can go and get a lot of information. Do you work for Bart Aaron or any of these people? Are you making some proceeds? Uh? <laughs> No, no. I have emailed him back and forth and tried to encourage him to visit with us and talk with us, but he wasn't really interested in it. However, uh, the website, Bible Islam, you can find a lot of reference material there and do, you do some study on your own. Uh, as far as some of the other books, after the first Gospels, the very first thing that comes is called the uh, Acts of the Apostles. That's the name of the book, Acts, the Book of Acts or Acts of the Apostles. This is also attributed to the same author of the book of Luke. They say whoever wrote Luke is probably the one who also wrote the Acts of the Apostles because whoever it was, he had a lot of access and knowledge about the person named Paul or Saul and his you know, carryings on, his, whatever he did, his history and so on is uh, accounted for here. And in chapters, um, chapters 7 or 9 and 24, Four and twenty-six. There, there's an account here, if you will. Uh, I don't have it in front of my mind right now, but the accounts of how Paul originally got his revelation when he was on his road to Damascus and when he was carrying the papers to Damascus to be able to per legally persecute anybody who had left their form of Judaism to this new thing called Christianity. And in fact, it wasn't even called Christianity yet. He says in, an, in another book they wrote, he says that they were never called Christians until they went to Antioch. Well, he calls them people of the way. So people of the way, he was on his way to, to uh, serve papers to the government there that showed that they had permission to grab these people, put them in chains, drag them back, torture them, punish them, kill them. He said that himself in the text. So, uh, no, Paul didn't know him. Uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, he didn't know uh, any first-hand account. He knew second-hand accounts from people who had known Jesus. But originally, as I said, he was killing those people. He wasn't listening to them for guidance. He was uh, making uh, fun of them or, you know, destroying them. As far as the Acts of the Apostles go, it, it is really uh, disputable about who actually wrote it. But it may be that the same author is the one who wrote Luke. Now, 
there's another book called Hebrews. In Hebrews, it appears whoever wrote this was writing to the Hebrews in particular, or the children of Israel, to try to uh, justify what's going on and make it uh, uh, compatible to what their teachings are, too. We're almost running out of time. We want to just continue on. We covered five so far. You have, uh, after uh, John, you have uh, Luke, no, after Acts of the Apostle Hebrews. For the rest of the 22, uh, 21, who wrote these? Are these all the rest from Paul or anonymous authors? Well, there's the book of Romans, for instance. And in Romans, this is uh, supposedly written to the, the um, what we would call Mushrikeen or the pagans who are not uh, from the Jewish background and so it is trying now to present things in a way that they would understand it according to their you know ideologies and so on then you have the first and second Corinthian letters these are a good example of letters that are written to churches uh, a bishop might write a letter to a church and send it out it would be rather large and this is why they're called books that it has chapters in it and then after a period of time they would write another one to them and this would be the second one and that's why they would say first corinthians second corinthians and in here there would be a lot of inspirational things that they would uh, tell them to think about this consider that or some of the mostly from saul you find a cancellation of the basic torah the torah itself meaning the old testament to us uh, he is saying that these laws, the many, and there are more than 200 commandments, direct commandments, not just 10. And he's saying that because of these laws, that he's a sinner. If it weren't for these laws, he wouldn't be a sinner. He says, therefore, I'm dead to the law. The law is dead to me. This is a direct contradiction, by the way, to whoever wrote the book of Matthew, because in chapter 5, 17, they're saying that they have a quote from Jesus himself saying that I came not to destroy the law not to destroy the law nor the teachings of the prophets he said rather I came to fulfill and uh, he goes on to say that if anybody even the, he says that not even the least dot or tittle or the smallest uh, letter from the alphabet of the law will be in any wise lessened but if anybody breaks any of these commandments and teaches this that it's okay then he's going to be the least in the kingdom in the next life but whoever keeps these commandments and uh, uh, teaches that he'll be the highest in the kingdom then it goes on whoever it was had a thing in for the Sanhedrin because he goes right straight to the Pharisees and, and he says it right here it says and unless your righteousness exceeds that of these Pharisees you will in no wise enter the kingdom so we see a direct uh, but as we will discover, as we discover more and more about the history of the person so-called Saul or Paul, he did have a, a vendetta against the Pharisees because they had turned him down, kicked him out, basically. His papers to go to Damascus were his last chance. And uh, they said, when you're done, you're finished, because the leader, the chief of the Sanhedrin, the high priest, had a beautiful daughter named Popeia. Paul is, or Saul then, is engaged to her, but because of his uh, ways, his manners, and his appearance, it was, uh, it was said that he was rather ugly, had a hunched back or a crouched uh, st uh, stance, and that she, not only did she run away from her father, she ran away from the synagogue and uh, the religion itself, and uh, was known to be a wife, or uh, at least a concubine of the Caesar at that time and it was said that she was in plays on stage and things like this totally against all the things the teachings of the, the Hebrew scripture <laughs> so the father of her is not impressed with Paul anymore at all or Saul and is basically told him no you're not gonna ever have a chance to be on our uh, Sanhedrin our board of directors if you will and you're never gonna have a chance to go anywhere with uh, Judaism you're finished you're out I think that's the way they tell the stories and these are stories that we can't confirm uh, a lot about we can what we confirm though is Popeya herself it is well known that she was a Jewish and that she had left their religion and left her father who was the high priest and that she had gone over to the Caesar that's historical fact well, we want to know the audience wants to know a sincere person who really wants to examine the evidence from these 27 books is there anybody that we can bring forward and examine 
their testimony? Are they receiving these revelations from God? Are they getting inspired by God? It, because the majority of people, as I'm understanding it, these books are anonymous. Is there any one of them that we can bring forward and examine? The witness. Like you would in the court of law. I understand what you're saying. That this is not even the intent of what people are saying. The, the, the scholars of the Bible are not trying to say that they've got an author for any particular one. What they're saying is that they know that the fact that they have enough different versions that there must have been an original. That's what they conclude. So they're just trying to determine what must have been the original and why changes were made and who made them. And that is what is called the, the, um, the criticism that they have or the way that the, the apologetics uh, deal with it. What I would suggest... Very interesting information. What I would love to take from this, um, from this video is the fact that I should be or we should be, you and I should be um, eager to learn more because of being presented with something. I really enjoyed this. I'm sad that it was this short. All the parts were this short. I wish there was more to this, but I guess they were working with time. Um, for someone to actually come out and say such a thing, listen to them and see what you can do about it. We've been given this information. You and I have been given this information. The question is now is, um, what are we going to do with the information? Are we still going to dig to find out why they did this to the Bible? Why so many versions? It doesn't make sense that um, even though it preaches one thing, it doesn't make sense that it's been so, um, how can I say, is it disintegrated? I don't even know what right word to use, but then it's been, I really can't think of a word right now, but why have so many different versions of, versions of something and otherwise always interesting and let me know what you guys think those are my thoughts let me know what you think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video